Hello guys, welcome to my channel techmon.in. In this video, we will learn how to create a data Spark data frame from a raw file. So uh, I'll come back to this section uh, later. What kind of libraries we want? I've already initialized the Spark session. So let's look at the file. I have loaded a iris a text file here. In this text file, we don't have any schema defined that is we don't know the column names we don't know what uh, what is the data type of the different columns we have so we will work with this file and we will create our spark data frame in this video so for this uh, first we need to look at the uh, types basically we have uh, in pyspark.sql.types we have different kind of data types like integer type string type or uh, let me show you a few dot as you can see we have integer type but the ones we are going to work today uh, are mainly structure Stru uh, these two struct type and struct field so what these are i'm quickly tell you about those so first uh, let's as you can see here uh, this is an uh, you know when we uh, read file uh, using this function text file we get a rdd as you can see here first as you can see here uh, we have to clean up data okay so uh, even though this is in uh, rtd format what we are going to do we are going to the, as you can see here this one record is a string so let me also show you that okay my bad we cannot use indices over rtd but we can first collect or take for example take take one so collect uh, just returns entire data but in, in using take function we can mention how many records or how many rows we want to get so here i mentioned uh, one so it will return only one record so let me also As you can see, we uh, got one as the length of the uh, array or list returned by the take function. And let's now look at collect. So uh, Iris dataset has uh, 150 records and we got that. So that's uh, the difference between take and collect. Now what we'll do, we'll be using map reduce over our data map basically uh, to convert this uh, first what we'll do we'll read each row at a time split the data set on this uh, comma here and once we have that comma what we are going to do we are going to create the schema of data and create a PySpark data frame out of it so let's do that i'll be using map map takes a anonymous function lambda functions uh, i'll say row because it will uh, work on a row at a time so each time it will read a, a single row that row will be stored in this variable row and now here i can write whatever uh, processing i want to do on this row object so what we want to do on this row object we want to split split on comma so now i have successfully split the data right so let's also look at the records take one as you can see now the values are separated so if i do len uh, or type of the one uh, row we'll get a list now we have the list ready so we, we have entire data here let me do 
okay now it will throw an error because uh, i've overwritten the data let me name it split it so that we don't overwrite it again and again okay now what we are going to do we are going to create our schema here going to create the schema now schema as you know uh, in any data set we can have multiple uh, columns right here we have uh, let's look at here one two three four five columns so we need to mention that there are five columns right so what we are going to do first we are going to create uh, like the outer list it is like a list of list right uh, and first uh, we will create the outer list using the data type struct type so it uh, does nothing it uh, it a uh, struct type uh, is like a collection of the column data right so it here we mentioned that we have one set of information for the columns and inside it we will specify the uh, metadata or schema for each of those columns and for uh, defining the schema for a particular column we use this time struct field struct field has five uh, in total five parameters but three are mainly useful for uh, four parameters uh, name data type uh, nullable and metadata but only three are useful for us so in first we will spec uh, we specify the name uh, so names of the iris data set are like this sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and then class level okay so first we are going to write sepal length uh, struct field takes in three parameters first is name of the column which is sepal uh, length here then it takes the data type so sepal length is as you can see here it is of type float right decimal values it will take so we will write from uh, t uh, which is types we will pick float type okay so we have already defined two parameters with first is column name sepal and second is is the data type of the column which is the float type and third whether this column can contain nulls or not if i type true it can take null values and since uh you know our data can be messy a lot of times so expecting null is the right choice here but if we uh, we are creating a column uh, format or schema for a column which is like uh, which will be unique throughout and cannot contain a null value like primary key then we will have to set it as false so i will be copying it five times two more times that's it now second column has the uh, will have the same schema but the name will be with sepal with similarly third column will have same instead of sepal it will have petal length and same for fourth column we have petal width uh, so, uh, fifth column is little different uh, i mean different by uh, i meant uh, by difference like we don't have float value here but instead we have category text data or categorical value here so here what i'll fill first name which is class label then instead of float type now i'll be using string type string type so this tells that uh, the column will have text data okay so these are the five individual records we have which mention the a schema define the schema uh, or, or metadata of a particular column uh, three parameters which we have used here are column name type of the data data type of the column and whether it can contain null value or not for example let's say we need we must have uh, 
class label in the data set then we can set it as false but here uh, since uh, we could be having you know test and train both data set combined and for test we don't have label we could have such scenarios right so i'll keep it as true meaning it can have null values and uh, it is as you can see here it is like a list which is struct type which is defining that uh, we have following information about the table so now i am going to run it how i will create now my data frame so create data frame okay how we'll do that spark df we will be using uh, first using spark create data frame function so in create data frame function first parameter we require to pass is the data which could be a list of list or could be rdd so that is the first parameter next what we require to uh, pass is the schema of the tables so that's what i'm going to pass here that's it here we have the data which is in this format list of list and each value separated of uh, we have uh, since we have five five columns each record contains five values okay then here we have the structure of the table we passed both of them here now i am going to show you records here is executing and this record is yep so meanwhile it is running i let me quickly recap it so as you can see here uh, the data types which we are using struct type struct field a uh, float type or in type or string type resides in pyspoc.sql.types then uh, we are reading our text file using this function text file uh, we are reading iris data set and we get a list of rows okay uh, so what happens it uses end of line character to separate out uh, the records okay once we have those records we found that so uh, we observe that uh, uh, each record is uh, a length uh, a string type and it does uh, it uh, was not separated by commas or that is each uh, value is not separated so we first separated those values so for each record we have now uh, five values so, uh, right and it is of type list now which earlier was of type string as we checked here okay and now it is of type list then we define the schema oh, okay so the problem here is that though we have mentioned that the value it contains is of float type but as you can see here the values are still of type string so we'll also have to take care of that so how we are going to do that uh, we can also either write here only or i like to add another map function lambda row now what we are going to do we are just for the uh, you know we will iterate over all these value for i in range or while i in row or val in row but we will skip the last value okay and for each one of them we are going to convert them into float for the last value i will just add it okay so let's see it in action okay so what is happening is uh, yeah it will work now so let me take an example and walk you through what it is doing so i'll take this as an example okay 
so first what I did here I read uh, let me copy this only and let me name it row so as you can see what first part does it takes only first four values uh, by minus one we mean just to skip the last value so minus one works uh, starts counting from the end and uh, as you know when we count from the beginning we start counting from zero but when we work with negative uh, indices we don't start counting from negative zero because there is nothing no such thing as negative zero we start counting from one so this value will be minus one this will be minus two minus three minus four minus five so on right so what i'm telling uh this uh of python function uh python to skip the last value and pick the rest of the values so i picked uh rest of the values one by one and then i converted them into float then what this uh, is doing here i'm just picking up the last value so uh, last value okay so this uh, gives me value right but i cannot add this uh, into my list we cannot add a string and a list we can only add two strings so what i did next was i took this entire i took row that uh, minus one so i put it uh, this uh, inside the as you can see earlier it was a string now it is a string inside a list now we can add these list so the output was this as uh, now we got each value in the float format as you can see here also right so i'm just going to do this now this is already no need to rerun because schema is defined correctly now also look at the error view uh, let's uh, again look at the error we were getting as you can see here sepal field sepal length it uh, was converting one at a time so for sepal length first column it found that it a uh, column takes value as float type which we have mentioned here but the value which we earlier passed to it was of string type right now we have converted it back to normal float value now let's see the uh, results as you can see here we have uh, the proper spark data frame design okay now let me also quickly print the schema as you can see here we have five columns sepal length sepal width petal length petal width are of float type and null label equal to two means they can take null values and last is class label which is of string value and null label is two meaning it can also take null values so this is how we define a schema in PySpark. okay that's all for today hope you are uh, learning from my lectures please subscribe to my channel and share my videos with your friends Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.